On January 24, 2023, a guy by the name of Shad Cien made the initial commit to what would become one of the most talked about and most loved anti-component library component libraries, Shad Cien UI. I say anti-component library because it's not a component library in the way that we think about component libraries today. It's not a dependency that you install and it's not distributed via NPM. It's simply a collection of beautifully designed components that you can copy and paste or use the nifty CLI tool to add to your app. It only took the Twitter algorithm about 36 tries to get me to look at this, but once I did, I was fascinated by the idea and I knew I had to have it. I knew right then and there I had to have it. See, I'm someone that always seems to run into limitations with component libraries. They either don't play well with something very specific and probably useless that I'm trying to do, or they just aren't designed to be heavily customized. So when I saw this project, I began to have hope that my three users would finally get the UI that they deserve. The only problem was that everything is written in React. No, 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 no. A language that I do not like to speak. So I decided to take it upon myself to port it to Svelte. And with the help of some friends, a lot of coffee, 55 failed attempts at setting up GitHub Actions and two weeks of my life, I present to you Shad and Svelte, a collection of accessible, customizable, open source, and beautifully designed Svelte components built with Radix Svelte and Tailwind CSS. Now we don't have complete feature parity with the original version just yet. And of course the goal is to get there eventually, but we do already have quite a few components to choose from like accordions, alert dialogues, cards, collapsibles, sheets, and a lot more. Each component has its own page in the docs that includes some examples, the code used to build that example, and then other useful information about the component itself. So for example, on the button page, we have a basic button here at the top. And then as we scroll down, we have setup instructions, usage examples, and some of the different variants of the button, like primary, secondary, destructive, and ghost. There's also an example section of the docs, which shows how to use these components together to build more complex UIs, like this dashboard here. It brings together a few different components like buttons, cards, and tabs to bet out this sleek looking dashboard. There's also a card examples page, which uses some of the form components to create some good looking cards, as well as an authentication example page, which shows how you can use the components to build out a stunning login page. If you wanna see the source code for any of these examples, you can just click on the view code link here, and it's gonna take you straight to the code for that example. So now that you've seen the docs and have a better idea as to what this project is all about, I wanna walk you through how to get started using it. If we head to the installation page of the docs, we have instructions for getting started with a new project, as well as a manual setup in case you have a project existing already where it might conflict with the setup that the CLI tool automatically does. Now we're going to be setting up a new project from scratch and I don't have anything fancy planned to build out for this demo. I just want to introduce you to the project, show you how to use it, and also how to customize it a little bit and explain some of the things that are going on behind the scenes. So the first thing we need to do is set up a new SvelteKit project with PMPM Create Svelte. I'm going to set up a skeleton project with TypeScript and all the other little dependencies that come along with it. The next thing we'll have to add is Tailwind CSS, which Shad CN Svelte heavily relies on. It's built on top of Tailwind CSS. So we have to have Tailwind CSS running in our project before we can start to use these components. And we can actually add that very easily by using the Svelte add package. So we can just run PMPX Svelte dash add at latest Tailwind CSS. And what that's going to do is going to go ahead and set up all the necessary dependencies for Tailwind, add our Tailwind config file, create an app.post CSS and do all that stuff for us. So now we can open this up in our editor. And as you can see, we have Tailwind set up and ready to go, which means we're now ready to initialize Shad CN Svelte in our project. And using the CLI tool is the easiest way to do so. It's gonna take care of all of that boring setup for us, copy all those configs over and get us ready to go. So all you have to do to kick that off is run PMPX Shad CN dash Svelte init. So what exactly did that do? Well, if we look at our app.post CSS file, we can see that some variables have been added for light and dark mode which are then used inside of this updated tailwind.config file. And if you want to customize the default colors, you can check out the theming page of the docs, which contains instructions on how to do so. It's just as simple as updating the CSS variables in the app.post CSS file. Everything else will reflect across the application. Now the init command also added a path alias for our components to our svelte.config file to make importing them a bit cleaner. And lastly, it created a utils.ts file in our source slash lib directory. And this file just contains a single utility function that uses CLSX and Tailwind merge, which allows us to easily merge and conditionally apply Tailwind classes without conflicting with each other or duplicating them inside of our rendered code. 
So now we have all this stuff set up. We can start adding components to our project. And we can do so by running pmpx shad cn svelte add and then typing in the component's name. Or we can just say add and it's going to give us a list of all the components that are available. So we can scroll through these and then we can use space to select which ones we want to add to our project. So let's just select the accordion and the button components for now and hit enter. Now it's going to prompt us for an output directory, which is where these components are going to be added to. We're going to leave it at the default, which is what I recommend, but feel free to change it if you want and then hit enter. So what the CLI is going to do is going to add that path that we chose to our svelte.config file here under this shad cn property. And then it's going to reference that on subsequent runs. So it's not going to ask you every single time where you want to install this component. It, it's just going to put it with the rest of them. So if you want to change it, you can just edit this line in your spell.config file, or of course, copy them over manually if you want to do some crazy stuff and spread them all over the place. So now if we check out our lib slash components slash UI directory, we can see that we have directories for each of the components that we selected. And then inside of each of those directories, we have these spell components, which make up that bigger component or that top level component. And then also an index.ts file in each one, which exports all those individual spell files. So while it might seem a bit odd to have a directory for the button component, component. If we look at the accordion, we can see that it's made up of four different components. So by having a directory for each component, we can import all of these from a single location. So for example, let's just copy over the example accordion code snippet from the docs and paste it into our page.svelte file. We'll also wrap this in a container so it has some breathing room. And then we'll need to start our dev server to make sure TypeScript picks up and all the path aliases and all that. And then as you can see, rather than importing each of these components on its own, we can simply import them all from the same accordion path. And then if we go to our browser and check out the page, we can see that we have a fully functional accordion here. Now let's just say that we didn't like these default styles or we wanted to customize them a bit, right? Well, all we have to do is head into our accordion directory and then edit the components to our liking. So let's just open the accordion content.svelte file and take a look. So as you can see here, we're utilizing the CN function and we're setting a default text size of text small. Now, if we wanted to change this default text size to something like text large, we certainly could, but just keep in mind, it's going to affect all the accordions across our app. So let's just say that we only wanted to change the text size to be text large for a very specific accordion. Well, all we have to do is just pass a class to the accordion content component in our page.svelte or wherever else you're consuming this component. And as you can see, the text size for this first accordion item has changed the value we passed, even though it already has a default text size of text small. And if we inspect the element, we no longer see the text small class. Now, Tailwind does try to be smart about this out of the box, but it's not perfect. And the CN util function is a great way to ensure that you're override the right default styles without conflicting with them. And what I mean by overriding the styles whenever we're using this CN function is that we're just overriding the styles that would normally conflict with the default styles, right? So in this case, we have text small here. So we obviously shouldn't be having two text dash anything on this component. It should only ever have one class that determines the text size, right? So what it will do is it will just swap out the text small with the text large. It's not going to override all the styles, just the ones, again, that, that we're pretty much explicitly overriding. Now, this CN function is used in just about every component that has default styles, which makes it super easy to keep those sensible defaults, but then override them on an as-needed basis. Now, of course, if you find that you want to change something that's nested within the component, like the padding values for this div here, you can just override them here or consider using a variant. And that's going to lead us into the next thing I want to talk about, which are variants. So if we look at the button.svelte file, we can see here that it has a variant prop, which is kind of this strange looking type here. And so if we look at the index.ts file here in this button directory, we can see we we have a wall of tailwind classes that are kind of overwhelming and they're all being passed into this CVA function, which comes from class variance authority. Now, this CVA function is a really powerful tool that allows us to create variants of components really easily. So let's dig into this button a bit to understand what's going on here. So the first argument, aka this massive list of classes here, are the base classes. And these are applied to all the variants. And then we have a variance object which contains all the variants of our component. Now, this might be a bit confusing because we have variants and variant here, but this variant could be anything you want. Chad just chose variant as the name. For example, we also have the size here as well, but basically anything you'd want the consumer of the component to be able to change independently from those other styles, you want to add to the variance object. And then we could set the default variants for each one as well. So now if we head back to our button.svelte file and we hover over the variant prop, you're going to see the names of all the different variants we have. And the same goes for the size prop. And those are all mapped perfectly to what's defined in our button variants here. So if we were to add a button to our page.svelte, we don't have to pass any props to it at all. And it's going to render with the default variant and default size. But if we want to change the variant, we can just simply pass the variant prop. And as you can see, we get autocomplete and type safety for the variants that we have, which is super nice. Now, if you want to learn more about CVA, I'll leave a link to the docs in the description down below. I highly recommend using it if you plan on creating a bunch of variations for your components, or if you're going to be using this to create your own component library, it makes that super easy. Now, of course, you don't have to use this. You don't even have to really know what CVA is doing 
doing to consume these components. This is more so to help people that really want to customize these or build out their own component libraries or just want to know how it's working behind the scenes. So this is why I'm explaining all of this. If you're just going to be a consumer of the components, you don't have to worry about this at all. And that pretty much covers the introduction I wanted to give to Shad, C, and Svelte. Now I'm looking forward to seeing what you all build with it. So please share your projects with me on Twitter and Discord. I also want to mention that I've been working on a powerful integration with Svelkit Superforms. It's going to make it even easier to build beautiful, accessible, and functional forms for your apps. I'm still working through the initial implementation, but I expect that this will be released in the very near future. And I will certainly upload a video about it once it's ready. One last note is that we're actively looking for feedback. So if you have any suggestions, ideas, or happen to catch any bugs, please open an issue on GitHub and we're more than happy to help or talk about it. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.